morning, guys. Today I want to talk to you about explicit and recursive formulas. Uh, these are formulas that we use when we've got an ordered set of numbers. We call that a sequence. So when we have a group of numbers that are created by a pattern, uh, some mathematical operation executed again and again and again, uh, we can use a recursive formula or an explicit formula to describe that pattern without writing out the entire list of numbers, the entire sequence. <clears throat> so a uh, recursive formula relates one term uh, in the set to the previous term in the set. So I'm going to tell you what's going on by saying what did I do to the number right before it. And that's really all we have right here. To get a specific number in the term, the nth term, sorry, specific number in the set, we've got it the nth term. Uh, we're just going to take the term right before it. So one before the nth term is the n minus one term. So the term right before it, and then we're going to execute the pattern on it, whether it be adding, multiplying, dividing, subtracting, some type of mathematical operation <coughs> on that. And then you always want to state where, e on there, uh, whatever the first term is. So if I was, I'm trying to describe to someone how I can recreate this specific sequence, this specific ordered set. I'm telling them, start here, and every single time, perform this pattern on a number to get the next number. Uh, so let's look at how to write a recursive formula. Let's look at a couple of examples of recursive formula. So uh, if we looked at number one here, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Pretty standard uh, pattern or sequence right there. And we just want to describe the pattern. So how are we moving? What mathematical operation is taking us from one term to the next term? Well, it should be obvious that we're just adding two to each term. They're the even numbers, so they're two units apart. So adding two, adding two, adding two, adding two. So the pattern is add two. Okay? So my pattern is add two each time. Now let's write that as an ex or as a recursive formula. So I would say a sub n to get any term, I need to take the previous term, the n minus one term. It's one before n, the n minus one. I need to add two, and then I got to tell them where to start. So we want to start where a sub one, which is the first term, is two. So that's it. I can recreate this list of numbers by starting here and adding two to every single number. So that's it for dealing with recursive. It's not very involved. It's pretty straightforward. Describing the pattern, describing where to start. So take a second, see if you can come up with the recursive formula for this one. Okay, hopefully you were able to get it. Let's check and see how you did. Uh, first, we need to describe the pattern. Well, this is minus 20, minus 10, minus 5. So we're not adding or subtracting the same number every time. So it's probably going to be a multiplication problem. And we do want to think of it as multiplication. You can see that we're dividing the numbers in two each time. 40 divided by 2 is 20, divided by 2 is 10, divided by 2 is 5, divided by 2 is 5 halves. But in math, remember, we don't like to think in terms of dividing or subtracting. We want to think in terms of multiplying by the reciprocal or adding the negative. So we're going to look at this as multiplying by the reciprocal of 2 instead of dividing by 2, so multiplying by a half. So our pattern is um, multiply by 1 half, and then we go ahead and write it as a recursive. So to get any term, I take the term before it, multiply it by a half. Remembering to start at 40. So somebody can look at that and know I want to start at 40 and multiply every single number by 1 half. Because we've shown right here, previous term by a half gives us the next term. Okay, that's our recursive formulas. Give me a second and I'll get the notes up here about explicit formulas. So now let's talk about explicit formula. Explicit formula is very, very different from recursive formula. A recursive formula tells us where to start, and it tells us uh, what I do to one term to get to the next term. Explicit formula, all we need to know is the position within the system, or within the sequence. 
So it says, if I know what my position is, say I'm looking for the fifth number in the sequence, or the tenth number in the sequence, or the fifteenth number in the sequence, I plug that one number into the formula, and it's that one position, and it's going to spit out the actual value. So explicit formula relates one term in the sequence to the position of that number within the sequence, whether it's first, second, third term, or whatever it happens to be. So very different. It's a lot more useful of a formula because we don't have to recreate the entire list. We can look and grab individual terms as we go. But it can be a lot more complex. It obviously is a lot more complex, a lot more involved uh, most of the time. So we're not relating the terms to each other as we did in the recursive formula. We're relating the terms to the position. And then there's a pattern of how all the terms relate to their position. Uh, so I always like to write down what the position is. So if this, that's right, is my a sub n, these are my sp any term in the sequence, then this would be the position. n is the position. So in first position, we have 1. In second position, we have 2. Third position, fourth position, fifth position, sixth position. Now we want to look at individual relationships here, but we want to look at the overall pattern. What's happening to every single position to produce every single value? Again, it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a puzzle. You just want to look at it, see, we'll learn some techniques to play around with these, uh, but you really just look at it, explore, kind of play around with numbers until you start to see, I can do the same thing no matter which position I plug in, it's going to produce the same thing. So, uh, let's Pause for a second and write down the positions on this one also. So if this is a sub n, and these are my n's, that's position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, position 5, and position 6. And I want you guys to just take a second and don't, you don't have to write the formula yet. Pause the video, take a couple of moments, and see if you can identify the pattern that relates the positions to the actual numbers on the sequence. What's going on between 1 and 1, 2 and 4, 3 and 9, 4 and 16, and so on? Or 1 and 4, 2 and 8, 3 and 12, and 4 and 16. What's the pattern within the, uh, relating the positions to the values within the um, sequence? So again, pause it, play around with that, and then uh, I'll come back and we'll do, uh, we'll write the actual uh, explicit formula out. Okay, hopefully you were able to come up with it. Let's see what you got. Uh, I recognize that I've got 1 to 1 and 2 to 4 and 3 to 9. I'm looking at squares. This, to me, looks like 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared. So our formula should be position squared. So that's our explicit formula. To get any number within the list, within the sequence, I just need to square its position. So if I wanted the fifth number, put in 5. 5 squared is 25. Well, that matches up. If I wanted the third number, put in 3. 3 squared is 9. Well, that matches up. If I wanted the tenth number, put in 10. 10 squared is 100. So I can create any number without recreating the whole list. I can go grab the millionth term in this sequence by plugging in a million and seeing what that happens to give me. Okay. Um, now let's look at this second one here, see if we can recognize what the pattern was here. To get from 1 to 4, 2 to 8, 3 to 12, 4 to 16, 5 to 20, and so on. To me, it looks like we are taking each of these numbers and multiplying them by 4. 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 4 is 20. 6 times 4 is 24. So the pattern is to take the position and multiply it by 4. So our explicit formula says to get any term, we do 4 times that term's position. So if I wanted the fifth term, 4 times 5 is 20. Yeah, it is. If I wanted the second term, 4 times 2 is 8. Yeah, it is. If I wanted the 13th term, 4 times 13 is 52. So you can get any number in the list without create, recreating the whole list. So that's the benefit to the explicit formula. But again, it's a little bit trickier um, how to turn, or how to first identify the relationship and then turn it into an equation. But 
I say trickier, but it, it shouldn't be. There's two specific ones we're going to focus a lot on in the next few lectures um, as far as explicit and recursive formulas. But realistically, we're creating an explicit formula is a formula to generate a list of numbers. Well, isn't that all a function is? Plug in one number, get a number out. Well, I plug in a whole set of numbers, the domain, and we get a whole set of numbers out, the range. So realistically, we're just taking this set of points, and these are the input, and these are the output. So we're just taking a set of points, a relation, and trying to create a rule for it, trying to create a function that models it. So if you can kind of keep it in terms of that, uh, we have some tools to be able to take sets of numbers and be able to turn them into functions if we know what type of function it is. And we, again, we have techniques that we've looked at, uh, whether it be first differences or finding common ratios and things of that nature. Well, that's it for uh, explicit and recursive formulas, and I will see you in class tomorrow, guys.